Hey guys, here's an update on the Westinghouse WRA project. I've got the cabinet uh, broken down into all the component pieces. There's the main cabinet line on the floor. Here's the center board I've taken out and already glued down and stripped down. I just need to repair the, uh, the edge here. What I'm going to do is take some uh, old veneer from other uh, damaged items and try to patch it in or use new stuff, whichever matches the grain best and uh, you know try to patch it in here so it doesn't look like it's too obvious and then uh, I'll be using some toner lacquer on the whole thing. I'll try a lighter color like a golden oak or light walnut to give it some contrast to the dark walnut I'm going to use on the main body. Here's the speaker I already uh, repaired, restored. Here's the main power supply and audio amp chassis. Uh, I've since learned that this is actually the main filter capacitor. There's three or four capacitors in this large metal box. Now even though the radio does work, these will go bad eventually and I should replace them anyways. And I've also noticed some discoloration here which may indicate some uh, leakage of uh, the wax that these probably are using. Now to get this box open there's uh, some pretty heavy duty looking metal tabs that are bent over underneath so I'll try using a screwdriver to carefully pry those back over and uh, slide that can open and uh, who knows what's inside but uh, I'm sure it will be interesting. I'll, I'll record a video on that and how I restuffed it and remounted it. And then there's the main chassis. Uh, I did discover that the local distance switch, which is what these wires were going to, was just ru a rusted out mess. I couldn't salvage it so I've taken it out. Luckily, I picked up a Filco, I think it's a 76 jump chassis recently, that I think I can replace that with. It's a little bit unusual because it's really just a, like a DP DT switch, something like this. But it's not a toggle, it's a rotary. And um, with a quarter inch shaft, a half moon shaft on it, you don't find something like that too often. So I'd rather use a more modern one with multiple suctions and just not use those or uh, I could use a switch like this but of course the knob wouldn't fit on it and it would just be like a, a little toggle switch or I'll try or hopefully I can uh, use that Filco uh, switch. Uh, also I was surprised that the, the uh, control door actually comes right off too. It's just held on by four screws. Once I took it off I, it was easy to see what the original color scheme was on this. Uh, it's actually a nice smooth, it's in, it's in good shape, but it's a dark walnut, so I've ordered up some Mohawk dark walnut toner lacquer. I think it would be a good match for this. And I'll be stripping all this old finish off. Now, onto the main cabinet. What I've been doing with this is gluing down all the loose veneer. You may recall in my, uh, I think part one I showed all the loose veneer. Well, here it is again. I've never seen so much separation. I'm amazed that these panels haven't actually popped off because <laughs> It's loose like this far in from this side and this far in from that side. It's like a one inch strip just holding this entire sheet of veneer on. So here's my technique to uh, re-glue veneer. Um, got a little bowl here. I put in some tight bond too and diluted it with water. I first started out with a fairly dilute solution like two parts water, one part glue. And take a brush and just flood it in. Tilt this, I tilt the whole thing on its side so gravity will pull the water and glue down inside. And I'll, if you do this, it kind of forms a pumping action because you want to get it in all the way down as, as, you know, as far as this opening will go to make sure that this whole thing will get, glued, will get glued down. I then make a thicker mix of like one part glue, one part water, flood that in there, and then finally just straight glue um, along the top, along the, uh, the, the the edge closest to the, uh, the split. Then I take a piece of plastic, put it on top on a board, and then clamp it down with some C clamps. I was lucky that the clamps I have, if I carefully arrange them and twist it around, ugh, they just fit. So I'm able to, on all four edges, or all four sides I should say, clamp this down. So I'll slide this over, 
make a sandwich out of it. Also put a piece of a block of wood underneath. Even though it's an interior surface, there's no reason to mar it up if you don't have to. And then I clamp it down with the... Uh, I just have three clamps here, so I work on a small section at a time, which is you know, not a bad idea anyway, so you can have some control. So I do about a foot at a time and move my way down. I've already done a couple sides, and uh, it worked out just great. Also a good idea to keep... A sponge, a damp sponge handy to mop up excess glue as it squirts out. I just glued this down a moment ago and it's uh, already nicely adhered. Well, one way you can find the loose veneer is to simply tap on it. So that all sounds pretty solid while I work my way over. There, you can hear the loose veneer. Solid. Loose. Now these fingers are going to be challenging. What I've got left, I'll glue back down, and I found some of the broken off bits that I'll glue back down where I can. But otherwise, I think I will try to reproduce the way they made this originally, which was to... Here's the base, base wood, I believe it's plywood. Then it was kind of an underlayment veneer, like some white wood, maybe like birch or beech or something. And then the, then the walnut. So what they did is they, they glued down this just as one continuous sheet. Then they used a saw to cut these notches in. But they didn't go all the way through, so there was probably a curb, like a rotary saw, and they just stopped, and then these cuts just, you know, gradually come out to you know, whole wood. So I will try to reproduce that as best I can. And likewise over here, I'll patch in veneer as best I can. Now I could use some like wood putty and just fill this in and level it out and then maybe pick, you know, try to make some veneer marks, or sorry, um, grain marks in the putty, but eh, I've got the veneer, I've got the time, I have the patience, I'll try to redo it even though you can see that's a pretty intensive project here. Now once all that's done, I'll strip it down. It's best to do all the veneer repair gluing before you strip it, that way you get the protection of the old finish from the clamps and such which may you know, scrape against this. Also when you strip it you can take away any glue because glue is going to ooze out and it gets on the surface here but when you strip it that will all come down to nice bare wood. So that's what I did on this piece already. Now you got a few choices with stripper. I think I mentioned this before the citrus strip stripping gel which works great. But it's just a, it's a kind of a gooey gel. You slop it on with a brush wait a while then scrape it off with a scraper wipe up the excess with paper towels then use mineral spirits to wipe down the excess it's a very it's a messy time intensive process but the citrus strip is cheap and it's fairly non-toxic not a lot of fumes or anything it just kind of smells like nice oranges so it's not not a bad way to go but you will have a lot of work to do to clean up all the residue or you can use something like this, like MAC or methyl ethyl chloride base stripper, which is really harsh. This will really do a number on your skin. So wear the right kind of gloves. And by right, right, by right kind, I mean, read the back of the can and see what you need to use. Because all the gloves I've tried, like vinyl, latex, whatnot, this will eat right through them. So <laughs> be warned. Uh, but this also is fairly inexpensive and it'll strip through anything you can see it works on yeah wood metal masonry paint it's I uh, use some of this on uh, some bake light cabinets to eat through the paint and some metal parts and it work fine but you got nasty fumes like I said it's harsh on the skin so I don't I'm not crazy about using that either so on more uh, delicate items items I think are worth putting the time and money into I uh, use something like this. Form bees also make something like this. Uh, it's called uh, furniture refinisher. Uh, this is a combination of oh, I don't know, various turpentines and and uh, spirits and whatnot. And what you do with this is you soak a little into a piece of steel wool, and you carefully rub it. It'll dissolve the old finish, like it says. It dissolves in minutes without stripping. Then take some paper towels and wipe it up. And you can work in just a small section at a time. This also has oils in it, so as it's stripping off the finish, it will actually help uh, put, you know, moisturize the wood, I guess you could say. So when you're done, the wood isn't bone dry. 
Uh, but this only works on old finishes. This will not strip polyurethane. It won't work on metal or anything like that. Uh, now, I'd use this on all of my old wood stuff, but there's one downside. It's far more expensive than the other stuff, like three, four times more expensive. Uh, let me pop the can open and I'll show you how it works.